Mathematics Ordinary Level Paper 1 2022 Part 5 Let's go on with question number 26. Solve the following equations. Now, the best will be for this first question to look on page 171, example 53 in the textbook will help you. It's just because it's almost like I'm going to make Q the subject of the formula and I'm going to work with the root. Okay, so if I have 5Q squared is equal to 80. So I just divide by 5 both sides and I get 60. But don't forget, if you take the square root, you must write plus minus. Okay, and then the answer will be plus minus 5. Four. So the value of Q will be plus minus 4. Okay, for the next one, you can look on page 202 in the Y equals MX plus C Ordinary Level Mathematics Textbook Grade 10, 11, Part 1. So in this one, I'm going to have 5, 6, X equals 65. I divide 5, I divide 5. Then 6 to the power of x is equal to 13. Okay, now, this is logs. The chapter there on page 202, example 30, you can go and look. It's, it's going to help you a lot. It's almost exactly the same. It's, it's going to be logs. So what I'm going to do, I can either go from log form to expert. No, it will not work because you don't work with a base of 6 in an ordinary level. The best will be to take logs on both sides. It's like I put locks on both sides. And then I use that power rule and I bring the x down. And then I divide log 6. And I divide log 6. And then I take my calculator and I press log 13 divide log 6 equals. And then I get Okay, first always x, write down the full calculator display, 1.4315254493, and the value of x is 1.43, correct to three significant figures. But first write your full calculator display. Let's go and look at the answer, or the report. So if I look here, this is question 26. So the first one was well answered. The majority of candidates succeed in dividing both sides by 5 first. Some candidates attempt to take the square root as first step, but then fail to take the square root of 5 as well. It was sadly often seen that candidates fail to write, uh, write just the answer of Q in the answer space. It was also often seen that candidates wrote this in the answer space. It should further be noted that square root 16 is an exact number and the and the form must be seen in the final answer. Okay, but remember the plus minus. It didn't seem they were so strict, but it's mathematically correct. Okay, and then this one, extremely poorly answered. Most candidates did not realize that they could not multiply 5 and 6 in the in the, um, their difference differ. Their indices differ. Okay, so basically you cannot multiply because the one, the 5 indice is 1 and the 6 will be x and it cannot the basis must be the same but i wrongly found x okay is this okay mannequins did not have any knowledge of the theory of logarithms and just played around with numbers till they got the correct value the expected order of operation was to divide by five first before logarithms was inserted that's what we did then, did you see? Full calculator display. But if you just came to that answer, just dividing 5 on both sides, you already got one mark, so show your steps. Okay. And then just, but okay, but then you had to take the x in front, then you could, could get two marks. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to the question paper. Let's look at number 27. Okay, simplify. Okay, and this is now indices. Very nicely, very nice question. And you can go in the textbook. There's very nice ones. On page 184, 
I think that example six, that would be excellent. Okay, so let's just rewrite. So 5x minus y multiplying 1 to 5, 3x minus y over 25x. Okay, what you always remember, prime factors. So 1 to 5, if you want to do it with the pencil there, 1 to 5, you can just go and say 5, 25, 5, 5, 5, 1. Okay, and what was 25? 25 was just then the 5, 5, 5, 1. So let's just rewrite that. So it's going to be 5x minus y multiply 5 to the power of 3, 3x minus y over 5 to the power 2 x okay so you can even put it first in brackets so then i'm going to say 5 x minus y multiply 5 so 3 times 3 was 9 x minus 3 y over 5 and that was 2 x okay and then i'm just going to make the top one term I follow the rules. What do I do with the indices? If the bases are the same, I just add it. I'm going to just rewrite that step in. Could have made it already, but just make it a little bit longer. Okay, and now I simplify. So 5. So x plus 9x, what will that be? <clears throat> that is going to be 10x. And then negative 3, so this is negative 4y. And that's 5 2x and then I'm going to have 5 and then 10x minus 4y and then I subtract the 2x so I have 5 so okay 10 minus 2 and that's 8x minus 4y and my final answer is and always write it in this space okay so as I said, um, it's just the indices, the rules that you have to know. It's really that very straightforward to ask. Okay, so if I look there, if I look at this one, this is question 27. I think I go to the next page. Okay, uh, let's say it's moderately answered as in the previous question. It was sadly seen very often that the base 5 and 25 were wrongly multiplied in the numerator. Some candidates confuse the one term above the line as two terms and wrong, wrongly try to write it as that incorrect. There's not a plus in between. That's not its indices. In general, a lack of the knowledge of exponential rules was displayed throughout this question. Many candidates realized that they needed to write this as the product of its prime factors first, but failed to apply the correct exponential laws after that. So if it's multiply, you add the exponents if the bases are the same. And if it's divide, if the bases are the same, you subtract the exponents. It was also seen often in the question that candidates attempt to apply two rules simultaneously, one correctly and one wrongly. This result in the loss of marks as wrong working. So they may not be wrong working. So you can either write it like this, as I did, or you can split it up and bring it down, which I think... Uh, was would have been a little bit more challenging, but this was 100% correct. Let's go back to the question paper and do the next page. Okay, and again, I'm going to give you a reference page in the textbook. So if you go to page 645 and you go to example 14, that is going to help you. This is probability. And this is a bit more difficult because it's not one event. It's more like extended type of work. It's two events. So the probability of Bianca passing her first maths test is 3 over 5. The probability of Bianca passing her second maths test is 4 out of 5. Calculate the probability of Bianca passing her first math test and file her second math test. Now, it's, it's, this is independent. The one test is nothing to do with the other test. It's not like I have a suite and I remove the suite and I'm not replacing. So if I make the two, the best will be first to start with the tree diagram. So 
if I'm going to, for the first event, I make a diagram. And for the second event, I also make a diagram. So for the first event, it's going to be, so let's make this, it's going to be my first. And this is going to be my second. So for the first event, it's the probability of, okay, let's draw this, say, pass is 3 over 5. Now, the probability of fail will be the rest of, of uh, the fraction. So it's 1 minus 3 over 5, which is 2 over 5. But that's the first test. So for the second test, the probability of passed, okay, passed is 4 out of 5. So every time pass is on top, and that's 4 out of 5. But the probability of fail is the rest of 5 over 5 minus 4 over 5, which will be 1 over 5. So fail will be 1 over 5. And now I'm going to look. So if I'm going to check now, I'm going to say, calculate the probability of Bianca passing her first math test. Okay, so she's passing the first and failing her second math test. So it's going to be this branch. So basically, I'm going to say 3 over 5. I'm just going to go back to my pen. It's 3 over 5 multiply 1 over 5, and that's going to be 3 over 25. And write it in your space. Okay. So use a tree diagram. It's really going to help you. And if I go back, if I go back to the report, and I just look at question number 28. Okay. So, modelly answer, most candidates realised that they had to multiply two fractions. Many, however, failed to calculate the property of failing the second test, that it becomes 1 over 5, and the second fraction. It was very often seen that both given fractions was just wrongly multiplied with each other, but that was the answer. Okay, let's start with question number 29. PT is a tangent to the semicircle, very important, with center O. AOBP is a straight line. Angle TAO is 28 degrees. Okay. Now, before I start with, let's just reflect angles in a circle. Now, if they say that this is a diameter, it's a semicircle, then I know that the angle in a semicircle will be 90 degrees. I'm just going to fill in this. If... They say that this is a tangent. I know that the angle between a tangent and the angle between a radius, and that will be equal to 90 degrees. Okay. Now, from there on, I think usually they, it's almost like they try to lead you on the easiest path. Because you can work out all the angles, which it's always a way to go. But you can also look what did they ask first. They ask you to find x first. Why? Because this is a radius of the circle. This is also a radius from the center to the circumference. So I know that the base angles of an isosceles triangle, they will be equal. So I'm just going to already know that this value will be 28 degrees. So this one will be 28 degrees. Okay, to start with y, I think what we're first going to do is we work in this red triangle. So if you work in this red triangle, you are going to say, and you can even just mark it there on your sketch, you're going to say 180, because that's the red triangle, all the sum of the interior angles of the triangle, and then you're going to subtract the 28, and you're going to subtract the 90. And if you do that, then you're going to get that it's equal to 62. So I know that this one is 62 degrees. Or you can just say 90, because that's 90. So 90 minus 28 is 62. But now don't forget that this is again ready, ready. So this one will also be 62. The base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal. So basically I can also work out this one by saying 180 minus 62 minus 62. So if I press 180 
minus 62 minus 62 and it's 56 and you can do it in pencil there so that you can clean if you are making a mistake okay 56 now if I have that now I'm in the blue triangle because in the blue triangle look here can you see I know that the angle between a tangent and a radius is 90 I know that this is 56 so basically I can find that value of y and we can even write it here Okay, I'm first going to write it here on top. So to get that value of y, I'm just going to say 180 minus 56 minus 90, or just 90 minus um, 56. So 180 minus 90 minus 56, and I'm going to get it's equal to 34 degrees. And I think basically you can show your working, you can write it here, and just saying that y is equal to 180 minus 56 minus 90 and that's 34 degrees okay but fill it in and on your sketch and another thing that I want to just emphasize is that in, in when you work out angles just remember your basic don't, don't think only about circles they think of angles in a triangle isosceles equilateral and then always work it out like first complete all the angles in a triangle and then you flow over to the next one and you start completing everything in that. And don't forget that adjacent angles on a straight line is 180. You could have even, you could have even, and I think that would have been actually an easier method. I'm going to show you this method also quickly. You could have, e I think it would have been better to work out this one. And to say, and I'm going to show you it's coming to the same. To say 180 minus 28 minus 28 and then I, I got minus 28, 1, 2, 4. So this angle was 1, 2, 4. And then angles on a straight line, I could have said, okay, now I can go for, on a straight line, it's 180 minus 1, 2, 4. And if, if I say 180 minus 1, 2, 4, I would have get that 56 also. That was another road. So it's not to say that, only one road that lead to Rome. There's many roads. So I could have worked out this one. And it, then I didn't have to work out the 62s. And then I could have just worked in this blue one and say 180 minus the 56 minus the 90. And I also got Y. So it doesn't matter how. Just work out angles even if they don't ask it. On your way to finding the one that they ask. Okay. And now let's just end this by looking at the report. And seeing what the report is saying of question 29. Let's see if it's still on this page. No. It's on the next page. It's 27, 29. There it is. The first one was well answered. Most can realize that an isosceles triangle is created because OA and OT are radii and have the same length. The next one was poorly answered. Most candidates did not have the knowledge of the theory of circle theorems, angles of circles. So basically, and remember, that was, I think most of the time is because they just focus, they want to directly get that value of y. But work out all the angles on your way to y, and then you will get the value of y. As your final exams approach, I want to highlight the importance of the y equals mx plus c mathematics textbooks. If you don't have them yet, you can find them at the following bookshops. These textbooks will be your reliable study companions, guiding you towards mathematical success. For educators aiming for exceptional maths exam results, start using the Y equals MX plus C mathematics textbooks used by leading schools in your classroom. They are part of the NEET catalog and can be easily obtained within your ministry's textbook budget. Make sure to communicate your request to your region's procurement department to empower your learners with the best educational resources. Furthermore, schools have the option to place direct orders with us and we offer bulk order discounts. Reach out to us via email at the address below. Best of luck in your maths journey.